All right, so you guys have been going absolutely crazy over this one right here. This is the new Orochi V2 from Razer, a small, lightweight wireless gaming mouse with a huge battery life and a really interesting shape. And I think the most exciting thing here is that many are calling this the Logitech G305 Killer, which is a mouse that has kind of reigned as the budget wireless king for around three years now. So is it finally time to put the G305 to rest? Because that is a mouse that I've recommended for so long, and I also mained for almost a year as well. And the answer is mostly yes. The Orochi V2 is a fantastic little affordable wireless gaming mouse, and it's better than the G305 in pretty much every single way. Uh, one thing to note though, the G305 is a very different mouse when it comes to the feel uh, and size and shape. So depending on if you have a G305, this may or may not be an upgrade for you. So let's take a look at what you need to know. So Razer are positioning the Orochi V2 pretty much exactly the same as Logitech with the G305. It's a small, wireless, affordable, egg-shaped mouse with a replaceable battery. It's priced very similarly as well, about $20 to $30 over the G305, but that is totally justified in my opinion given that this is a more premium mouse. For starters, the glides are significantly better on the Orochi V2. Seriously, it's a night and day difference versus the G305. Big surface area, super smooth, and best of all, these don't really require any break in time at all, they're very smooth straight out of the box. Secondly are the buttons which feel really nice, these are the second generation mechanical switch from Razer which are based off of the KLG M4s. These have a very nice defined click and sound. If you do press towards the very end of the mouse it can tend to feel a little bit spongy, but otherwise I found these really nice to use. So despite not using the super fast Razer optical switches, click latency here is very respectable and among the fastest that you'll see today. Also, I'm yet to build a dedicated system for this testing, so I don't have to repeat it for each round like I have here, but that'll be the next step. As for the scroll wheel, this feels very similar to the one from the Viper Ultimate, which gets a big thumbs up from me. Really nice to find steps, but also not too loud, and positioning is also pretty decent as well. Tap strafing in Apex, for example, which I have bound both to scroll up and down, that felt very comfortable and familiar. Also, this back cover is actually completely removable and swappable to different designs too, which Razer will be selling separately. And some of these designs actually do look pretty sick. So if you're after a bit of personalization, this is definitely a nice option to have. And this reveals what I think is one of the most interesting talking points of this mouse, in my opinion, which is the battery placement. So here you've got the option to install either a AA or AAA battery, but depending on which one you go with, you'll be affecting the mouse weight, battery life, and also the weight distribution. The included AA lithium battery puts the Orochi V2 at around 72 grams with a centered weight distribution and battery life of around 425 hours, whereas a AAA lithium battery puts the weight to 65 grams, shifts the weight further back, and cuts the battery life roughly in half. Also, big thumbs up to Razer for actually including a AA lithium battery with the Orochi V2, extending the battery life and reducing the weight as well, not with a cheap alkaline which you get with the G3 However, I still find it really weird that you see a 60 gram weight quoted on the box and on the website, but then there's a little asterisk that says excludes weight. It's kind of useless to tell me the weight of the mouse without a battery because that's not how I'm going to be using it. Borderline false advertising as well, but let's just let it slide for now. In the future, just tell me what the weight of the mouse actually is on the box so people don't think that they're actually getting a 60 gram mouse. But back to the options, which one do you actually go with? The heavier AA, which is more centered, or the lighter AAA with more weight to the back? Well, this might actually surprise some of you, but I found the heavier AA option to be the most comfortable for me, pretty much solely due to weight distribution. Installing the AAA battery does shift the weight further back a really noticeable amount, and I did prefer that more centered weight distribution, but I might experiment with this a little bit more down the road, and a lot of it does come down to personal preference. Either way, it's really nice to have the option. Now, first impressions of the overall size and shape here was this 
This thing is really small and the shape kind of feels like one of those random office mice that you'd find in a cubicle. It's noticeably smaller than the Logitech G305, especially at the rear where there really isn't much to grip for the palm of your hand at all. It's an almost symmetrical shape with some side contouring for your thumb and I'm not going to lie, picking this thing up for the first time I found it really uncomfortable. As someone who has medium to large sized hands and uses a claw grip, there's just barely any of that support at the rear of the mouse for my style of grip. Another thing that I noticed right away was the super forward sensor placement, not centered like you'll find on most mice, and this was really weird at first. But despite this, the more I used it, the more it began to really grow on me, and it actually brought back memories of when I used to main the G305, like how you can just absolutely throw these smaller mice around and have a lot of confidence using them. Scores in aim trainers were also okay. My high score in aim lab grid shot is 91,000 done with the G Pro Superlite, and on the same day, I was scoring slightly above 80,000 with the Orochi V2. Then I did a bit better in Kovacs Ascended Tracking. High score here is a touch under 13,000, and my best score with the Orochi was around 12,500. So for claw grip users like myself, it's doable, especially if your hands are medium to small, but ideally this mouse is for those with a fingertip grip. I think the contouring for the thumb on the side, the shorter length, and the lower back really satisfies that grip style and those users. But now onto some things that were a bit more average. Firstly, the USB dongle does not come with an extension cable like the one that you'll find with the G305 or other Logitech products. So if you're planning on plugging this at the rear of your PC, think again because the signal will be pretty much impossible. The coating of the shell is also pretty average. I found it to be a little bit slippery during extended sweaty matches, very similar to the G305. And then the liftoff distance of the sensor, which is a bit higher than what I'm used to, about the same as the Viper Mini, which I ended up meaning for a few months. So it's definitely something that I think most people can get used to. If you're solely a wrist aimer though, you'll probably want to give this one a pass. So I think it's finally time for the Logitech G305 to be retired as kind of the small budget wireless kind of egg-shaped mouse to go to. And that's good because we now have a better option in the form of the Orochi V2. I mean, you can compare the two on any spec or feature and the Orochi V2 is just objectively better, except for when it comes to the size and shape. The G305 does feel noticeably bigger in the hand. So I think it's a little bit more friendly for those with larger hands and for those specifically using a claw grip. And I think the biggest thing that I want to get across here is that everyone who was happy with the G305 is not necessarily going to kind of fit the scope of the Orochi V2. The Orochi V2 does feel noticeably smaller and does have less mass at the back of the mouse, so just consider that before pulling the trigger. So I'm currently using the G Pro Superlight. This is not going to be an upgrade for me personally, but I can totally see why a ton of people are going crazy over the new Orochi V2. And for those wondering, this would replace the G305 in my latest top five wireless gaming mouse list. So as always, a huge thanks for watching. If you are interested in the Orochi V2, I'll leave it linked down below and I will see you all in the next one.